So welcome everybody to another one of our seminars. Today we have the pleasure to having Gabor uh, Drotos. Uh, Gabor is, is doing his postdoc with uh, Tomasz Vertesi in the Institute for Nuclear Research of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. They're in uh, Debrecen, Hungary. I hope that I pronounce the city in the right way. <laughs> yes, yes, you have. <laughs> Uh, so today, Gabor is going to talk about self-testing of uh, semi-symmetric informationally complete measurements in a qubit prepare and measurement scenario. Uh, thank you for accepting in our invitation, Gabor, and the screen is yours. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, for the invitation and uh, good afternoon for the audience. Um, as uh, um, it was introduced, I will talk about, in fact, the certification of a certain class of uh, quantum measurements in a particular scenario, which I will uh, well explain. Uh, so um, I will uh, start um, by introducing this uh, given class of, uh, of uh, measurements, uh, which- uh, Gabor. Sorry to interrupt you. Could you um, increase the, the, the screen? Thank you very much. Good. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I will start the introduction by introducing the concept of POVM, should anyone uh, uh, would uh, need it. Uh, so uh, positive operator valued measures uh, constitute the general construction for describing quantum measurements. And they uh, just uh, consist of a set of operators uh, that act on a Hilbert space of dimension D, such that all of these operators are positive and uh, sum uh, up to identity. Uh, these uh, two requirements are sufficient to, to uh, define uh, quantum measurements. And uh, it has to be noted that uh, they are not uh, necessarily projective, uh, which means that the subsequent application of uh, these operators uh, is not necessarily identical uh, to a single application of, uh, the, uh, of, of the operators. And uh, uh, why uh, I am starting with uh, this introduction is that non-projective POVMs uh, have uh, um, promising applications uh, in uh, quantum mechanics related fields. For example, I would just uh, mention quantum cryptography. And uh, uh, for uh, such applications, uh, uh, certain classes of measurements can be more appropriate or more useful than others. And uh, Jenk et al. Uh, recently introduced uh, so far unknown class of uh, POVMs, uh, non-projective POVMs called semi-symmetric informationally complete POVMs. So what are they? Uh, uh, they are uh, a set of POVM. Uh, so so it, they are defined by a set of POVM elements that are informationally complete. That means that the number equals to d square, where d is the dimension of the Hilbert space, uh, such that uh, all of them are rank one, and the trace of the product of arbitrary two uh, uh, of these elements uh, is the same. And uh, uh, this is a kind of a symmetric condition. Uh, this is where this name comes from. So uh, in dimension two, it turns out that uh, this uh, trace can only take on value, values between uh, 1 16th uh, inclusive, uh, exclusive and 1 12th inclusive. And uh, then uh, uh, they are uh, defined uh, up to uh, unitary or anti unitary uh, transformation which corresponds to a rotation and a reflect, reflection through the origin uh, in the block representation, that is when they are represented by these block vectors H, I. Uh, in particular, uh, these block vectors uh, form the so-called digonal disphenoid, which is just a tetrahedron 
that has uh, uh, four uh, edges of equal length, uh, whereas it has two other edges that can be different uh, in length from each other and from the rest of the edges. Uh, here is just on the left hand side, you can just uh, see uh, an illustration for uh, uh, non specific uh, or not, not uh, yeah, non, non special uh, case uh, how the, uh, these block vectors, uh, uh, where these block, block vectors point uh, on the surface of the block sphere. Whereas on the right hand side, we can see one of the limiting cases. Uh, in the uh, allowed interval for the parameter b, uh, in which case uh, these uh, block vectors point to the vertices of a regular tet tetrahedron. Uh, in this case, uh, in fact, uh, these uh, uh, operators form a symmetric informationally complete POVM when the traces of all the uh, operators uh, which correspond uh, to these uh, prefactors uh, in the block representation uh, are all uh, equal. But uh, this is generally uh, not the case for arbitrary values of B. Uh, in fact, uh, there are two different uh, uh, two different possible values that can be uh, taken by these uh, traces. So these are uh, the semi-seq uh, POVMs, uh, in dimension two at least. Uh, and uh, we now uh, want to uh, uh, now imagine that we want to uh, apply these POVMs uh, for some practical purpose. Uh, can, I have, can I have a question? Because I yes, didn't quite get the... Uh the notion of semi CPOVM. So where, where the semi uh, term comes? Well, sem from? semi, yes. Is that semi like the trace is B, right? Or the, the trace, uh, uh, the, the Hilbert inner product of this, uh, uh, of uh, any two uh, mm -hmm. uh, operators uh, is equal. It is it's always B. It's always defined by this parameter B. But uh, so th this is a symmetric property. But uh, they are not. What uh, but, but but what 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 uh, what is called the symmetric information a complete POVM also satisfies that the traces of the uh, of the uh, operators themselves uh, have to be equal. And this is not fulfilled in general. Okay. Uh, okay. And this is this is why why this so it uh, why why uh, the distinction from symmetric information complete POVMs has been introduced by this uh, prefix semi. Okay, but the, but the last condition that you wrote that the trace of EI is uh, equals one half. Uh, so this is something for qubits, huh, I guess. So it's going to repeat your question. So the, the last condition that you wrote that the trace uh -huh. of EI operators equals AI equals one half is uh, is for qubits. Right? Is is uh, so uh, so so uh, uh, yeah the, the value of one half is uh, is uh, specific to to the dimension two, okay. but but. Uh, uh, um, but um, okay, yes, yes. So, yeah, I did not. Uh, uh, perhaps I did not uh, uh, denote it. Did, did not uh, write it properly. So, uh, so in the general dimension, mm -hmm. uh, there is a requirement that uh, that the, they must be equal, not necessarily one, not necessarily one half. In fact, I think. Uh, it is one over something related to the dimension of the of the of of, of the Hilbert space, uh, but but they they have to be uh, equal, uh, not necessarily one half, but equal. But but this condition does not follow from the condition on the Hilbert split inner product uh, mm -hmm. of the of the operators. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you for the question. And uh, now I will uh, just repeat that perhaps uh, we uh, get to the idea to uh, to apply uh, such measurements, measurements described uh, or implementing semi cp UVMs uh, in an application, but uh, requirements uh, for this application to work, to, to be trusted, is that uh, these measurements uh, uh, have to be certified. That is, uh, we have to certify that uh, a certain uh, measurement implements the semi seq uh, POVM. And uh, in general, uh, for the certification for a certification task, an appealing approach is uh, the so-called device independent certification, uh, when we make no assumptions about uh, the inner working uh, of the system. Uh, and uh, uh, this, of course, uh, makes uh, corresponding uh, the corresponding certification uh, invulnerable, but at the same time difficult to implement. And for this reason, we turn to a semi-device independent uh, approach in which uh, we make some assumptions about, about the system. And... Uh, for the particular task of certifying a semi CPU VM, we uh, adopt a scheme from Tavakoli et al., uh, which uh, relies on a preparem measure scenario. In a preparem measure scenario, we have two parties, Alice and Bob. Alice receives an input denoted, uh, the value of which is denoted by X, and depending on the value of X, uh, 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 she prepares uh, a quantum mechanical state uh, characterized by uh, density operator rho x and sends it to Bob. Bob also receives an input uh, denoted by y, and uh, depending on the value of y, uh, he performs a measurement on this uh, quantum mechanical state. And the measure, measure and the result of the measurement will be labeled by B. And uh, the uh, uh, our aim will be to certify one of those measurements. I mean, for one particular y, uh, to be a semi sick POVM with a given parameter B. And the method that we invoke for this task is a semi-device independent self-testing in which we draw conclusions almost only based on the output statistics uh, of uh, Bob's measurements. Uh, our particular setup you know, uh, uh, consists uh, or uh, uh, is uh, based on four options for both uh, Alice's input and Bob's input. That is, Alice can prepare four different uh, states, and Bob can perform uh, four different uh, measurements. And in case uh, uh, Bob's input uh, takes on the value of four, then Bob's measurement will be a four outcome measurement uh, when the outcomes are, are labeled from one to four, whereas in the rest of the cases, Bob's, Bob performs a two outcome measurement when the uh, outputs will be labeled by uh, zero and one. So this setup generates a probability distribution, the probability of uh, each outcome conditioned uh, on the input of Alice and Bob. And uh, before uh, evaluating uh, uh, or uh, the uh, experiment, uh, I have to mention that we will uh, take an assumption, we may make an assumption about uh, the dimensionality of the Hilbert space uh, in which uh, uh, Alice's uh, uh, prepared states live. In particular, the dimension of this Hilbert space uh, is assumed to be equal to two. 
okay uh, with uh, uh, even uh, without this assumption we can in fact uh, evaluate uh, um, uh, uh, statistics uh, I mean evaluate a quantifier and, uh, uh, or evaluate uh, the function of the output statistics uh, output in terms uh, of these uh, probabilities or in terms of this probability distribution generated by the setup uh, and this function we will call a witness and uh, our particular witness consists of two different sums. The second sum considers only uh, the cases when Bob receives uh, his fourth input and performs his fourth uh, uh, measurement. And uh, uh, in the, even in this case, we only consider uh, those uh, instances when uh, the uh, output of uh, the uh, of uh, of his measurement takes on the same value uh, uh, as the input of uh, uh, received by Alice, and we just sum up the corresponding uh, probabilities uh, for all uh, possible inputs of Alice, uh, input values of Alice, and subtract uh, this uh, this sum uh, from a different from another sum. This other sum uh, is just a linear combination of uh, all different uh, options uh, entering uh, in this conditional uh, probability uh, defined uh, uh, by the setup. Um, uh, when Bob receives a, a value uh, uh, one, two, uh, or three as uh, his input. And uh, the coefficients in this linear combination uh, are just opposite uh, for the two values of uh, Bob's, uh, uh, of Bob's uh, uh, two possible outcomes, for, for Bob's two uh, possible outcomes. And uh, uh, in terms of X and Y, they can be arranged into a matrix which we, which we call the witness matrix. Um, this matrix uh, will have uh, two parameters, uh, C1 and C2. Yeah, so the different uh, 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 columns of the matrix, of course, correspond to different uh, measurements uh, out of the first three measurements of Bob. And the different rows of this witness matrix correspond to the different preparations uh, 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 the different or the different uh, input values received uh, by Alice. And uh, uh, these two parameters introduced in this witness matrix uh, uh, will uh, be made dependent uh, on the uh, particular parameter value of the semi sig POVM that we aim to self test. And the statement is the following. So, Robert, can I have a question before you like explain your statement? So, like, so concerning this this witness, so mm -hmm. what's the what's the intuition behind it? So, how how do you uh, I don't know construct this type of witnesses so that you know that it will uh, allow you to certify a given measurement? Well, uh, because yeah. I can understand why you subtract yeah. like the sum of this. Uh, the sum, no, consisting of these four probabilities, because like in the end you want them to be zero or something. Mm -hmm. But the, the first term, the first expression, including the the matrix W, how how do you construct it? Okay, so um, in general, uh, uh, such a uh, uh, linear witness uh, in terms of the of the probabilities mm -hmm. was uh, suggested uh, already by Tavakoli et al to be uh, utilized uh, mm -hmm. for self testing to be to be useful for self testing and um, well uh, so you just have to mo uh, modify the coefficients in the matrix or something yes 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 okay. so so we 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 just modified uh, the mod the coefficients of the matrix uh, uh, um, uh, with 
by pay, uh, along with paying attention uh, to the symmetry of the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so basically, um, basically we have uh, we have. Uh, uh, I I, I uh, do not actually know, but uh, I believe that uh, this uh, or uh, guess that these uh, two uh, values, uh, two two parameters uh, entering uh, the uh, the. Uh, uh, uh witness matrix uh these two different uh values for the for the two for the first the second and the and the third and the uh, fourth rows uh, uh are related to the two different uh traces uh that uh, the, the the first the second and the third and the fourth uh POVM, POVM elements have in the semi-seq informationally complete uh, POVM. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. so in case uh, we evaluate uh, this fitness in an experiment and uh, end up with the value displayed here, uh, depending on the choice of, uh, of uh, our choice of, uh, of the cap of capital B, then we can be certain that Bob's fourth measurement is a semi seq POVM with parameter B, and also uh, we know that his for further measurements and Alice's preparations are determined up to unitary or anti-unitary transformation. So how how this works? Uh, if we want to self test. A particular semi seq POVM, I mean, with, I mean with the particular parameter B, we can uh, set up uh, an experiment with these determined uh, preparations and measurements. And if these, if these determined preparations and measurements, uh, the result uh, from the experiment uh, 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 re results or leads to this, uh, this particular value for the witness, then uh, this fourth measurement introduced into the experiment will be certified as a semi seq POVM with parameter B. This is uh, basically the result. And I will now explain how we know this. And uh, for starting this explanation, I will uh, uh, consider or uh, elaborate on what the setup uh, and the assumption imply. So the assumption is that uh, this uh, density uh, operator uh, characterizing uh, the preparation of Alice uh, acts on a two-dimensional Hilbert space. And uh, then uh, it can be uh, written uh, in the block representation uh, in which it is characterized by this block vector uh, mx uh, for all different values of x. Well, uh, in fact, there is a theorem that uh, only pure states can be self-tested because, in fact, we will self-test the states as well, characterized so that self-test the states as well. And there is a theorem that only pure states can be self-tested but uh, this would need to be uh, proven separately so that I do not uh, make this assumption here and uh, allow for mixed uh, states so far. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, this means that, that uh, uh, the uh, block vectors characterizing the preparations uh, have uh, at most uh, length of one, but they can have a uh, smaller lengths uh, as well. So this is the uh, uh, the preparation. Uh, this is the the, uh, the assumption that makes our approach only semi device independent. Okay. As for the measurements performed by Bob, uh, their uh, form depends on the input uh, received by Bob. If this input is uh, uh, takes on its fourth value, uh, then uh, we uh, have to uh, uh, write a four outcome POVM, which is characterized uh, by uh, by uh, this 
uh, also a block vector, a set of blo four block vectors, I mean. And, uh, and uh, uh, the coefficients here uh, will follow from completeness if these block vectors are not coplanar. But uh, the block vectors relevant for us will be shown to be not coplanar. Uh, as for uh, the two outcome measurements, uh, I will first uh, uh, speak about this prefactor here, uh, which depends uh, on a parameter uh, mu y. This, if this parameter mu y is zero, then this prefactor is simply one, and uh, uh, completeness uh, uh, implies that to the two vectors uh, or corresponding to the two out outcomes, the two block vectors corresponding to the two outcomes uh, within this uh, uh, within this uh, main uh, uh, part of the formula, or most important part of the formula in some sense, uh, are equal. And in this case, uh, this uh, uh, this, this, this formula will simply uh, 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 reduce uh, to the usual uh, form uh, of a projective measurement. So it is very simple for, for mu, mu, mu y uh, uh, equal, equal uh, to one, uh, sorry, to zero. Uh, this is simply a uh, usual uh, projective measurement that Bob performs. But uh, if this mu one is equal to one or minus one, then the two operators uh, describing uh, or corresponding to the two outcomes uh, of uh, Bob's uh, 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 one of Bob's measurement of his first three measurements uh, will so one of the operators will be the identity, and the other operator will be the null operator. So that in this case, Bob's uh, measurement uh, will be uh, uh, will be degenerate in the sense that, uh, irrespective uh, of the state, uh, he will always uh, produce one of the outputs, one of one of the output values. Uh, and uh, to write the most general form of a two-output measurement we uh, allow for anything in between these two ex extreme cases. And uh, then this parameter mu y runs from minus one to plus one. And along with the block vectors, which have to satisfy this relationship related to completeness, uh, characterize, uh, fully characterize uh, Bob's two outcome measurement. So I highlighted by red uh, the uh, uh, entities uh, in this uh, set of equations that have to be known uh, for the full characterization of the of the of the uh, of, of, uh, of the scenario. Okay, uh, with these uh, uh, formulae, uh, we can uh, construct a theoretical form. For the witness, uh, for, for for the witness, uh, and uh, this is uh, based on the fact that these probabilities uh, can be evaluated according to Born's rule. And now I will assume that Bob's uh, measurements are non-degenerate and leave the discussion of uh, of the case of more general uh, uh, cases. Uh, uh, for later. In this case, as I mentioned, uh, the two block vectors reduce uh, corresponding to the two uh, outcomes, uh, reduce uh, to the same block vector. And uh, with this block vector and the block vectors of the preparations and those characterizing Bob's score measurement, uh, uh, this uh, witness takes on this uh, very simple, uh, very simple form, and uh, uh, so this is this this is uh, 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 so far we haven't char characterized our uh, uh, our uh, preparations and measurements. Uh, we only introduced uh, notations or formulae uh, with which uh, 
we could uh, we could transform uh, this uh, this form for the witness uh, to uh, to to one in which uh, these characteristics these uh, block vectors appear. And the next step in self testing is to find uh, this uh, uh, the maxim the maximum value of this witness and the location in terms of these entities uh, uh, of these of these block vectors uh, where this maximum is attained and the idea is that in case this location is up is unique up to an isometry uh, and uh, and if uh, this unique location uh, corresponds uh, to the semi cp ovm then uh, then we know that attaining the maximum with this witness uh, can could only be achieved by uh, by uh, 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 by uh, introducing uh, the semi cp ovm the target as bob's fourth measurement so uh, I will now uh, find the maximum of this witness in terms of M, V, and N. All, all vectors, of course, all for all different indices. And I will start with the second term, which is obviously maximal, uh, uh, takes on its maximum value if uh, these uh, block vectors corresponding to uh, the preparations uh, of Alice and uh, Bob's fourth POVM uh, are opposite. This is how uh, Bob's fourth measurements, which will be uh, which which uh, which uh, will be related to the target. Uh, so Bob's uh, Bob's fourth uh, measurement, which is actually the target, uh, will be will be uh, related. Uh, to the measurements prepared by Alice. And if this, uh, this condition is fulfilled, then uh, the maximum uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, this, in M and N uh, will take on a value of zero in, for the second term. Uh, for the first sum, yeah, but I mean, can I have a question concerning the, the previous yes. slide? So, so we say here that uh, if you take the, how to say, uh, I mean, if nx equals minus mx, then the maximal value of w prime is zero. But uh, uh, yeah, but according to the to the formulation of w prime, it should they, they should be parallel, no? I think. I mean, the so it's it's it's, it's only the second. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand, yeah. but I'm just I'm just saying that why it has to be why nx is minus a, a, a max, not not that they are equal. Because if it's minus, then you will get ah, one plus one. Ah, I, th I think this is a typo. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is this is just a typo. Uh, this should be this should be plus. Sorry. Uh, this okay. should be plus. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Sorry. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. 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 You are completely right. Uh, this is a typo. This this should be this should be plus. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, Okay, for, uh, I will uh, rearrange uh, the first uh, part of the witness such that I factor out uh, the rock vectors of Alice, and uh, and then they will be uh, in a dot product uh, with a linear combination of the block vectors of Bob. And supposing that this linear combination uh, is not uh, zero for any x, then uh, it is obvious that uh, uh, this witness is maximized by aligning Alice's block vectors with uh, this linear combination and taking the maximum maxim, maximum possible length, which is length one, uh, for these uh, for these block vectors, and uh, then uh, uh, the uh, maximum value of the witness uh, will be just the sum. Uh, of the absolute values of the lengths uh, of this uh, of, of of these linear combinations, but even if these linear combinations uh, are uh, are uh, are uh, or, or uh, uh, any of them is zero, 
this formula uh, for, the, for the maximum uh, still holds, of course. Uh, and uh, by making use of this fact, uh, one can, in fact, prove that uh, the maximum in Vy, the maximum in the block vectors corresponding to the uh, measurements, to the projective measurements, uh, is uh, is uh, uh, cannot be ca cannot uh, cannot uh, cannot correspond to a case when these uh, when these uh, block vectors v uh, i are such that such a um, such a combination would be would be zero because of this absolute value. So this can be this can be uh, it, it can be proven that that for the optimal uh, for optimal vi with vy this combination is not zero, so that mx will be determined by v by by this by, by these vectors vi through this uh, relationship uh, displayed here. Uh, then uh, uh, we in the next step. Uh, we want to find the maximum in vi, and for this uh, purpose, uh, we expand uh, this expression, and uh, by in, by introducing uh, by substituting uh, the values uh, of the, the the elements of the witness matrix, and it turns out that uh, this maximum uh, 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 in mx of the witness only depends on the dot products of the block vectors uh, characterizing uh, the, uh, the uh, projective measurements. And uh, then uh, it is uh, in harmony uh, with the fact that I mentioned earlier that uh, the maximum uh, location will only be identified up to a unitary or anti-unitary transformation, which corresponds to a rotation uh, or a, a, and a, a reflection through the origin uh, in, in, in the space uh, of the block vectors. Uh, so uh, for uh, attaining the maximum uh, in VY, uh, uh, we'll be investigated by attaining the maximum in terms of these uh, uh, of these uh, dot products, and in fact, it is not trivial, but uh, it turns out that a sufficient, uh, necessary, and sufficient condition for this maximum is really obtained by uh, making uh, the partial derivatives of this expression with respect to the dot products equal to zero, and from these expressions, uh, we find. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, location in terms of these products displayed at the bottom of the of the page, bottom of the slide. Uh, it says that uh, one of these block vectors uh, have to be has has to be perpendicular to other two, uh, which uh, at the same time make an angle that is not necessarily a right angle. And this angle will be denoted by two theta. And just to emphasize that we have uh, uh, up to unitary or uh, uh, up to an isometry, uh, 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 we have determined uh, this, uh, we, 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 I, uh, or ident uh, uniquely determined, uh, uh, uniquely identified these uh, block vectors. I just, I just give an example what they uh, might look like. And uh, from them, uh, as I argued earlier, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, block vectors of Ellis are also uh, Ellis's preparations are also determined. Uh, and uh, the corresponding maximum of the witness also takes on a value that is uh, a, a function of the parameters introduced in the witness matrix. Mm -hmm. And to sum up, uh, literally. Uh, as I told that the maximum of the witness, uh, uh, the second term in the witness is zero, I can just copy and paste uh, this, this expression. And this is uh, what, uh, what the maximum of the uh, witness looks like. Uh, looks like, um, maximum of the witness looks like 
uh, in terms of the two parameters of the uh, witness matrix. For the previously shown uh, VY and MX, and for this condition that the fourth uh, POVM uh, has block vectors uh, opposing analysis preparations. Now I will identify uh, these uh, block vectors with the target, these block vectors NX with the target, uh, by requiring that uh, they, uh, uh, their uh, dot product uh, uh, is the same as the dot, dot products are the same as the dot products of the uh, of, of the block vectors uh, of the semi sig POVM with parameter B that I just showed at the beginning. And uh, uh, by uh, this relationship between N and M, uh, we can relate the so far not uh, constrained parameters C1 and C2 to the block vector to the uh, to the parameters uh, parameter B of the of the semi POVM. So that uh, we will have the final uh, value of the witness in terms of the parameter B of the witness of, of the semi POVM to be self-tested. And we know that in case we obtain this maximum value in terms of B, then, then this can only happen uh, if, uh, if N, the vectors N uh, define a semi POVM and uh, the, para, the, the vectors M and V are also determined. Assuming that uh, the optimal measurements performed by Bob are not degenerate. And I will now briefly discuss the degenerate case. Uh, I, I mean, I will show that the degenerate case cannot be optimal. Uh, in particular, uh, it can be shown that it is sufficient in, uh, for the given form of the witness already uh, introduced by Tavakoli et al. Uh, it is sufficient to introduce, uh, to, to investigate uh, 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 fully degenerate measurements when, uh, when, when this value of mu y uh, takes on a, uh, is plus one or minus one. And for the particular uh, given uh, particular form of the witness matrix uh, that we introduced, uh, it is sufficient to investigate uh, the value plus one uh, and uh, the value plus one. Uh, sorry, uh, plus, plus minus one. The value can be plus one and minus one, but only 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 uh, corresponding to Bob's uh, first non-projective measurement, sorry, projective, only to, only to the corresponding to Bob's first projective measurement. Because uh, uh, the rest, uh, uh, the remaining two columns uh, of the witness matrix sum up to zero, uh, but the first uh, column does not sum up necessarily to zero. And this is why in this case, uh, the, uh, uh, degenerate measurements uh, can could be relevant, but uh, if we assume that uh, Bob's uh, uh, first measurement is de degenerate, we can show that the maximum of the witness in uh, is always smaller than uh, the value I just obtained in the previous slides. This means that if I obtain the value uh, in an experiment introduced in the pre previous slides, this also certifies that Bob's uh, projective measure, measure, measurements could not be degenerate. And by this, uh, we have uh, really uh, proven that this self-testing self works, and we have shown how to self-test semi PCP OVMs with the help of four preparations and three projective measurements in a preparation and measure scenario, assuming a dimension uh, bound uh, on the Hilbert space. Of course, this is not necessarily uh, the only uh, algorithm that can be imagined for certifying a semi uh, POVM. In fact, for any extremal POVM, uh, there are other 
what are uh, uh, methods already uh, introduced into literature. These are uh, the ones that I know, uh, I am aware of, that can be uh, that, that that give a recipe for uh, for uh, for this certification. Uh, but uh, I have to mention that a generalization of our of our, of our work uh, uh, on self testing uh, is in preparation, by which uh, any external POPM can be uh, self tested in a paper and measure scenario with the same dimension bound. And uh, the specialty of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, framework with four preparations and three projective measurements uh, that will still be still part of the generalization is that it is it 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 it, it is possibly minimal in terms of the number of preparations uh, and and projective measurements to be performed. And by this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Gabor. Uh, now we have time for questions. I I would like to make a question. Uh, sure. If if, uh, if you guys allow me. So um, as far as I understand, this B uh, cannot uh, assume too many values, right? Uh, for dimension two, the the interval that you can you take values for b are very small and when you go to higher dimensions uh it is worse right uh, it is still a, a, an open question well it's the, are... well, yeah, well it's... uh it turns out that for uh in in higher dimensions uh b uh can only take on uh values from a discrete set Mm -hmm. A set of finite, uh, finite uh, numerosity. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> given that, what is your motivation, your physical motivation for to, to use the semi-symmetric uh, POVMs? Well, this is uh, uh, yeah. So, so, so the work is about about uh, certifying that that. Our measurement, uh, one of our measurements, is really the semi OVM, and it is another question uh, why we consider it uh, semi OVM to be useful. And so far, uh, there is no uh, particular application of uh, uh, of semi OVMs uh, proposed. Uh, no, no, no concrete algorithm in which they would appear, but uh, as sick POVMs uh, are, uh, are are already known uh, mm -hmm. to be to be to be useful in in in, in particular uh, algorithms, uh, we uh, conjecture that semi sick POVMs, uh, as introduced uh, by Jeng et al. May also uh, find uh, might might also find applications. We do not really know this, but 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 assume that 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 uh, this is so. This is one 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 motivation. Uh, the other motivation uh, is that by playing around with the witness matrix, we can in fact uh, uh, we can in fact well we we in fact you already know. That uh, that 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 we can we can uh, self test uh, any extrema POVM in this possibly minimal, minimal setup. So this is this is a kind of a first step, uh, first step uh, towards uh, in 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 uh, in constructing uh, in a sufficiently smart way. Uh, um, witness matrix that 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 uh, that uh, makes uh, uh, self testing of various POVMs possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have more questions? Yeah, so uh, maybe I will. Oh, so, yeah, so, go ahead, Radik. Oh, okay. so maybe I would have a uh, I would have a question concerning this parameter B. So, you, so it's for qubits. It's like uh, there is some range, no, uh, where where it can like be, 
But what about the higher uh, dimensions? So is it that uh, there is only a finite set of numbers, uh, which- uh, Yes, yes, yes. It, in, it is, in every dimension uh, higher than two, you, it's just a finite set? Yes, 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 it is. Okay, that's weird. Okay, but okay. is it as it is? So uh, maybe I would have another question. So there was this paper mm -hmm. by Michał Oshmanians and uh, Nikolai Miklin about certification in the preparing measure scenario. And they, they, uh, they have a scheme which which they can certify any set of measurements, I guess. I don't remember now whether they they, they are able to certify POVMs, like non-projected POVMs, but I'm sure that they, they can certify any projected measurements. So how, how does this relate to, to their scheme? Uh, which oh, well, which work do you mean? Uh, well, there is this paper by Michał Oshmaniec and ah. Nikolai Miklin. Okay. Well, uh, I can find it for you. I think I do not uh, do not uh, uh, know that that particular paper. So uh, perhaps if you could uh, if you could uh, send me the ref reference, that would mm -hmm. be uh, okay. I will. I will. I will. I will try to find it. Yeah. Thank you. So while I'm finding it, Yannick can ask this question. Yeah. I Okay, so this is kind of a general question because I'm not very familiar with self-testing uh, like measurements, but can you make an approximate statement? Say that you, your value of your witness is like epsilon close to this maximal value. Can you then tell something about the, the, the measurement? Yes, that is a, a so-called robust self-testing in which, uh, in which uh, uh, one can certify that if uh, the deviation from this maximal value is smaller than a given uh, amount, a given given uh, value, uh, then given magnitude, then uh, the uh, mm, operators uh, are uh, at most uh, a given distance away from the target. So such a, such a, so, such a statement and, and an approach called robust self-testing exists. Yes. Okay, thanks. And can you apply it here or like, this is not like a robust scheme, but can you turn it into a, a robust? Well, we, we, we have not yet uh, tried. Uh, this okay. uh, is a uh, natural extension, of course, of the of the work. Okay, thanks. Okay, so Gabor, I, I sent you on the chat. I put the, the paper. Okay, so you can open it. Okay, let me. Well, I hope it's this one. Uh, yeah. It's this one. Let me. Uh, okay. Do we have more questions? Okay, so I think we can uh, finish for here. Uh, thank you very much, Gabor, for accepting our invitation. It was a pleasure, mm -hmm. and see you next time.